Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Rewatch. Today, we are going over the very colorful episode, The Painted Lady. Jared, how you doing, buddy? Theatricality and deception are powerful agents. I love how this has kind of become like a running joke. It's it's pretty like, much that. I was like, oh my gosh, another character becomes Batman in this, in this show. So we've had Toph be Batman. Zuko be Batman. Sokka be, be, be Batman. <laughs> and, and now it's uh, Katara be Batman. All we need is Aang to be Batman. Then we have the entire Bat family. Oh, I, I, I'm trying to think of an episode. There's an episode coming up where Sokka, where, where Katara might be Batman again. Just letting you know. Oh, God. Let, let's just say that and that's the episode where it's like, okay, I'm scared of her now. Mm-hmm. Oh. But but yeah, uh, so this is a painted lady. We're, we're, so basic, uh, it's it's a really interesting episode that kind of weaves together multiple different things. Like has a bit of an, like it has a bit of an environmental message, but doesn't bang you over the head with it. So kudos to them. Uh, and then it also has like you know, beware of false idols. Like it weaves together a lot of different things quite massively, I'd say. So what's your kind of your initial presence? Yeah, right? pr- pretty much. Yeah, this is another example of the show. Handling all this stuff, but not really like banging it over the head. So again, I too appreciate that. I also like again the whole because I called it like Katara was going to help these people in in uh, silence. The one thing I didn't expect was the end, and we'll go over that when we get there. But the point is, I as soon as I uh, as soon literally as soon as like the the crew is helping her take out fire nation people when she's being the painted lady i legit flash back to batman begins she <laughs> even has smoke bombs no she has mist bombs oh yeah pretty much but yeah and there's some parallels to us to uh to zuko alone here that mm-hmm. i'm going to touch upon but we'll get to that we'll, we will get to that so basically this episode t- kind of takes place in like a canyon kind of thing where like there's this like the, like this village on still it's got this river like a fishing village, but it's been polluted because of a factory. And Sokka, of all things, has like a schedule. Oh, did you notice that the schedule itself basically just looks like an animation timeline? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you've ever seen, like uh, like how animators plan out like how the workflow. Mm-hmm. It's that. It is literally mm-hmm. that. Yep, they go. That is such a m- m- a meta thing. I love that. Yes. Um. And so, like, they're kind of down and out, and this kind of takes place over several days. And all of a sudden, these people's lives start getting better. They, they talk about, oh, the painted lady brought us food. And then you actually see the painted lady. And I, I'm sorry, but as soon as, like, you start seeing the healing, it's like, that's Katara. It's Katara. That's Katara. They, they, they broadcasted it pretty, like, pr- pretty early who it was. Yeah, the show the show really wasn't even trying to hide it. Like literally at the end of that scene, when the head the head came up, you can see it was clearly Katara. Mm-hmm. Like they, like that wasn't the point of this episode. The point of the episode wasn't who was a painted lady. Like they weren't even trying to hide it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then like you had. Uh, I also love like the scene of of Aang trying to chase down the painted lady. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, did you notice that when like Aang was calling the spirit beautiful? Katara was getting a bit bashful. Yep, yep. Oh, I, I really, I really, really, really dug that. But, like, one thing, it's like, they did some industrial sabotage there. Yeah, I know, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna, this is interesting. I I mean, to be fair, that factory, if, if you're going to go by, like, war crimes, the factory is a valid military target, and the gang as insurgents, basically, they're they're they like I think guerrilla insurgents would probably be the best way to classify it. They're the most like abiding by the rules of war insurgents like ever. 
Except when they don't remember the balloon incident. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. But, yes, they do. But, but by of like rules of war, this was a perfect. That was a perfectly valid operation. Yeah, yeah, it was. And argue, yeah, one hundred percent. Because I think the way it works is that there's no like civilians on target, and it's a clearly identified as a, a military asset. Yeah, it's a factory supplying supplies to the war target. So it's 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 by all means, mm-hmm. it's it's all it's it's their game, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, don't you just love like the Fire Nation jet skis they had? <laughs> <laughs> this show never ceases to like amaze me about the level of obvious to technological like parallels to today's world. They make it obvious enough that you're like, I okay, I know what they're doing, but general enough that you're like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, the interesting thing about the outdoor world building, especially in like the last Airbender era, is. Um, the, the different societies are on different levels of tech, like a different levels of the tech tree, if you will. Mm-hmm. Like the Fire Nation is clear, clearly an industrial revolution era of, of technology, and, and and other and like other ones are you know different levels. Like Earth, Earth Kingdom is probably feudal, mm-hmm. and then uh, Southern Water Tribe is well tribal, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you will. Um, yeah, isn't that kind of a nice little little touch? Mm-hmm. This show, uh, it, it show did, did, does a fantastic job of world building. So yeah, uh, the Fire Nation people they they come, they're they're starting to wreck some crap, and uh, um, the Painted Lady shows up, and uh, ooh, uh, what 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 was that you said? What was the thing you said at the opening? Theatricality and deception are powerful agents. And boy, oh boy, did the yeah. gang really wait, yeah. wait, no, 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 I have to. Like, so, Miss Katara, I've seen you taken my lessons about theatricality a bit, literally. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I dear. love that. I love that line of Rachel Ghoul. Like that's what, the first. What you don't know about. before she took out that last uh, firebender, Katara leaned in and went, "I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you." <laughs> and Aang was like. Still doesn't work here. Yeah, so it still counts as murdering. <laughs> I'm, su- I'm surprised no one really hit, hit that movie hard for that leap in logic. Well, I will let you know that, like, they're like when we get later into the season, Aang's gonna say something that's really gonna trigger discussion about like killing people. So trust me, that discussion will happen, brother. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. Would be glorious. Mm-hmm. Oh, so so yeah. Um, and then they, they do like a really great cleanup. I love like to see them working together. And then and then Jared, what happens at the end? Who appears before Katara? The actual painted lady. So the, and that's the point where I was like, I didn't expect the painted lady to actually be like a spirit. I I thought that was just little, like Katara, and I was like, okay. Even Katara's like, wait, what? I mean, all myths has has a has a kernel of truth to them. Yeah, exactly. As they say in the episode, as a matter of fact. Oh, so yeah. Um, just also before we kind of get to the wrap up, what do you think of like Doc and all like the multiple personality thing? Like, like what do you think about like, that? That was great. I called that immediately, and I was like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really add or subtract anything from the episode. It's just kind of nice window dressing, like it's like funny. a nice little garnish if you will mm-hmm. <sighs> isn't it weird like the, the like the best episodes are the ones we have like the least to talk about like this was like a very good solid episode nothing earth shattering but just very solid extremely solid what would mm-hmm. you uh rate this year uh 9.5 out of 10 it was really fun particularly with the batman allegories <laughs> but yeah as a, I, DC, I, as a dc fan i appreciate that Yes, I would give this a 9.0. It's a it's a good episode. Rock freaking solid, but it's not really anything like earth earth shattering. Um, By the way, Nick, I'm looking at some trivia. It turns out, yes, yeah, Sokka's master schedule is actually a production schedule. All right, what are the oh oh, oh wait, no, 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 that's that's Justice League, sorry. But what other trivia you got for me, brother? This is the first time Aang is seen using a uniform band correctly as a sash and not as a headband. Ooh. The episode is similar to The Blue Spirit in that the main character adopts a mysterious identity to sneak out at night or like oh, Batman. Speak, speaking of parallels, 
Um, did you catch that parallel when when Katara was revealed as a waterbender? Even though she literally just saved the village, yeah, all turn on her. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, and the, and even Sokka's like, she saved your life. What are you talking about? See, this is a difference because the Earth Kingdom, even though like uh, Zuko literally just like saved the village, I do like. Also, I want to kind of add like add to this. I feel like if Zuko hadn't announced that he was a prince, they might have been a little more lenient. Mm -hmm. You know, but like firebender yeah that's bad but to literally be the crown prince like mm -hmm. like why did he have to do that like come on i agree this is also the first episode in which female firebenders other than azula are shown yeah because that's the, that's the one thing about like you, you can really give the fire nation military is that there are female firebenders because because like it's firebending like there's not really anything like gender specific to say that females can't be frontline firebenders you know, and the writers wanted to create this episode to show the war's negative impact extending even to the Fire Nation's own citizens. And I think they did a really good job because mm -hmm. you don't want it to look like, oh, the Firebender people are all a okay while everyone else suffers. Yes. So um, I think that about wraps up this yep. episode. But like next up, the next episode is probably one of my favorites, Jared. It, the next episode is episode four, Sokka's Master. And Jared, Sokka's Master is a Terminator. Ooh, really? Like, just listen to the voice, okay? It is a Terminator. And, 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 and like, from, from the movies. It is a Terminator from the movies. Does he have good phone etiquette? That tells me all I need to say. But 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 you just just and and, yeah. and by the way, it's uh one of the good ones. One of the good like, in other words, he's from a good Terminator movie. Okay, so that means it's either one or two. <laughs> yeah, because and, and, <laughs> that really narrows it down, actually. You know what's kind of funny? You'd be surprised how saying it, he's from the Terminator movies, one of the good ones, how that actually narrows it down. Well, well, it could be from Terminator Zero Chrono Chronicles, which is good. Or Salvation. Okay, fine, you got me. Christian Bale is, is the master. Yeah, because I still maintain that that, that uh, salvation is underrated. But this is a Terminator podcast, although we should uh, talk about Terminators on uh, Comics League. Dear God, now 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 I got to relearn the Terminator theme because I actually played on guitar. Oh, By the dude. way, Jared, Jared, I am doing the theme, Luke. Yes, <laughs> dude, when we review it, you have to do it. You have to do a live performance of that because that will be awesome. I, I, I have a big 12-inch Terminator action figure. So yeah, um, it, it's a really good episode. Loved it. Um, no, no, I mean the next episode is, is oh. really good. It's a Sokka focused episode. Sokka, you know, Sokka actually gets some time, you know, some good time, and um, yeah, it's really good. So thank you everyone for for watching this episode. And um, as we kind of continue on to this, it's just, this, I'm telling you, this season just gets better by the episode. You know, it does. Season two is still my favorite. But, like, season three is just really good. It, like, you know. And so, as always, this has been Nick from the Phoenix Press. And remember, I can only show you the door. You're the one who walk through it.